Dispenser going up. Well, I guess that'll do. Hello everyone and welcome once again to another episode of Engineering 101. A special episode in fact, this one is special because it's actually the very last one. After you've watched this video along with all of the previous episodes of Engineering 101, I think I can safely say that you've unofficially graduated and can no longer really call yourself a beginner engineer. Maybe you can promote yourself to like intermediate or something. Anyway, this doesn't mean that I won't be making any more tutorials or guide style videos. I think that I've just exhausted all of the major topics surrounding an advice for beginner level engineer players, so what better way to do a series finale than to throw out a bunch of miscellaneous tips and tricks that individually don't really deserve an entire video on their own, but are very useful nonetheless. So without further ado, let's start with some tips on general efficiency. One of the easiest ways to be efficient as engineer is to try and do multiple things at once as much as possible. Pre-building is something you can easily do at spawn when upgrading your own teleporter. Often this will happen when your team spawns move forward and you happen to be out on the battlefield, you should always prioritize replacing the teleporters as quickly as possible so that your team can keep up the pressure. Because you don't have to build teleporters in any particular order, you should always place down the exit whenever you are close to where you plan on putting it down later. This way when you end up at spawn again, your teleporter entrance will be the only thing that you have to build before it's ready to use. And this is where pre-building can come in handy. While you're upgrading your own teleporter at spawn, you can use the downtime to preemptively build a sentry or dispense that you plan on bringing to the front after you've fully upgraded the teleporter. Sentry guns are much faster to build than dispensers, so if you have to choose between the two, I'd recommend pre-building the dispenser. Usually by the time you're done upgrading the teleporter, the dispenser will be finished building, and all you have to do is replenish your metal and carry it through the teleporter to the front lines. Not only does this save you time, but it also takes advantage of the unlimited metal that you can get from spawn, which gives you more metal to work with once you get to your holding area. Not to mention, hauled buildings rebuild themselves at double speed, which will make them available at the front lines faster than if you were to build it on site. It also can provide you a bit of protection from cheeky spawn campers who might try and interrupt your upgrade progress if you decide to build a sentry gun. Another efficient thing that you can do at spawn while upgrading your teleporter is something that I like to call recharge skipping. Each level of your teleporter has a different recharge time with a level 1 taking 10 seconds to recharge, a level 2 taking 5 seconds, and a level 3 taking 3 seconds. However, the recharge time will reset back to zero when you upgrade the teleporter, which you can actually use to to your advantage when there is a long line of people trying to use it while you upgrade it. Teleporters only take about one second to go through the upgrade animation, so you can save a lot of time filtering your team through your teleporter this way. If you keep an eye on the recharge loading bar on your HUD, you can time your final hit to upgrade the teleporter to effectively skip the recharge time for each level. Compare this to how clunky sending multiple people through the teleporter is if you were to just mindlessly upgrade it without paying any attention to the recharge meter, and you can see just how effective this method can be in the long run, especially when you've got half your team trying to get through to the front lines. All right, enough about teleporters. Let's talk about everyone's favorite aimbots, sentry guns. Now, I'm not going to talk about sentry gun placement, as I've already gone over what exactly makes a sentry spot good in a previous episode of Engineering 101, but I will go over a few very useful tips that you can use when building, maintaining, and sneaking around with your old reliable friend here. First off, it's always good practice to put at least a few metal into the upgrade progress of your sentry gun before committing to fully upgrading it. Reason being that if your sentry gun starts firing, you'll be forced to spend part of your metal supply on replenishing the ammo that it spends, and just one bullet being fired at some random scout in the distance can prevent you from reaching the next level. But more importantly, it's crucial that you are aware of the upgrade progress in conjunction with whether it's currently firing or not. Since upgrading your sentry gun actually causes it to stop shooting for a second, you can sometimes inadvertently give your sentry gun's target a window of opportunity to close in on it and take it out. Even though a level 1 sentry fires slower than a level 2, it can often be worth holding off on upgrading it until after it's finished killing what it's currently firing at. Otherwise, that brief second of ceasefire can be the difference between you or your teammates living or dying to the intruder. Uh Oh, ninjineering alert, that's right. As long as we're talking about sentry guns killing people, I've got a tip for you sneaky engies out there who like to hide your gun in places that no one expects them to be. First of all, once your hidden sentry gun kills one or two people, it's pretty important that you move it, even if it's not that far away from where it was before. This is a good idea for most sentry gun positions, but usually if someone gets killed by a sentry gun that they were surprised by, the first thing that they're gonna do after they respawn is go and get revenge on the guy that tricked them into dying in some dumb way. But in more specific, more 
300 IQ play that you can make when building sentry guns that are hidden around random corners on the flank or in an obscure room somewhere is to face the sentry gun towards the wall. I know, I know. It sounds like something that a fresh install would do because he doesn't know how to turn the gun with his PDA, but hear me out. Typically, when someone walks through a doorway, they have one of two options. Keep walking forward or retreat. And the biggest indication that a player should continue to walk forward is that they are not getting shot at. Conversely, the biggest indication that a player should retreat is that they are taking damage from an unknown source. So, if your hidden corner sentry gun is facing the person right when they walk through the door, they will instantly start taking damage and they will likely back up as soon as possible. A full health player who does this probably won't die to the sentry gun and will likely just corner peek the gun until it goes down and your surprise will have been effectively ruined. However, if your sentry gun is facing the wall, it will take a brief moment to turn around which will allow the victim to continue into the room and greatly decrease his options for retreat once it starts to actually fire at them. Basically, the further into the room that they walk without taking damage, the longer the sentry gun will be able to shoot them as they attempt to retreat, which will more often result in their death. So yeah, sometimes facing your sentry gun towards a wall is actually the mega brain play that you never saw coming. Maybe these gibbous engineers are onto something here. Alright, the last thing that I want to say about sentry guns in particular actually has to do with not facing it towards walls, but rather placing them up against walls. If you can avoid it, don't do this. The reason being that your sentry gun is always susceptible to long range rockets and splash damage. And while a good soldier will aim his rockets true and land his directs effortlessly while flying through the air, not everyone is this perfect. And a big part of getting better at TF2 is forcing your enemies to make as little mistakes as possible in order to get the better of you. And if you place your gun far away from a wall, the splash damage from poorly aimed rockets will not hit them. Simple as that. If you're the kind of person that tends to back your sentry gun up against a wall or into a corner thinking that it's safer, you're actually just making it easier for an ubered soldier to damage your gun without really trying all that hard. So be aware of walls and try to keep about two or three NG's distance away from anything that can catch a rocket and hurt your precious buildings. Okay, so how about a little trick with dispensers? Do you ever have a problem where your team is too good? They're all fully healed up by your godlike medic and they're just pumping out bullets rockets at 100 miles an hour and you're just sitting there trying to figure out how to place the dispenser in a way that makes it parallel with the angle that the sunlight is shining down at when one of the Chad heavies yells put dispenser here well if you don't have time to build a dispenser before your teammates are all completely out of ammo you can just quickly build and destroy a dispenser right next to them to save the day it might seem counterintuitive to destroy your own dispenser to give people ammo but sometimes that's literally all your teammates need at that exact moment and believe it or not building gibbs gib a lot of ammunition when picked up, and I mean a lot. A dispenser when destroyed drops five building parts, or gibs, each of which gives ammo equal to 50% of a class's total ammo capacity. That means that one destroyed dispenser is equal to five medium ammo packs. That's equivalent to the amount of ammo that you'd get by standing next to a level three dispenser for six seconds. So it's safe to say that sometimes sacrificing 100 metal to instantly replenish your team's ammo is completely worth it. And if you have 100 metal left, you can just start building another dispenser right afterwards anyway. Speaking of dispensers, did you know that the payload cart is a dispenser? That's right, a payload cart distributes health, ammo, and metal at the same speed of a level 1 dispenser. The main difference between the payload cart and a dispenser is, however, that the payload cart can never run out of metal, and it can't be destroyed. Well, at least not until after you count the last point, but that's irrelevant. So while you're pushing the cart as engineer, take this opportunity where you practically have unlimited metal to just start chucking down buildings like they don't mean a thing. Seriously, having a dedicated payload load sentry gun is one of the easiest and most effective things an offensive engineer can do. There should practically never be a reason why you don't have a sentry gun nearby if you are pushing the cart. You can even abuse the rescue ranger to constantly keep the gun near the cart without having to walk back to grab it every time that you want to move forward. And you might as well put up a dispenser, sure, why not? And hey, a teleporter too, I mean you're not paying for it. Just pretend you're a teenage girl and the payload cart is your mom's credit card. Just keep on spending, there's literally no limit, just go for it. <clears throat> Side note, if you actually are a teenage girl, please do not assume that your mom's credit card has no limit. It does buy my shirts. Okay, so the last bit of advice that I have for beginner engineers is simply this. Have fun. I know I take this game and this class way too seriously, and that's my own burden to bear, but never forget that the engineer is hands down the class that allows for the most creativity, the most opportunities for the wildest of plays, and the best way to play a support class without 100% relying on your teammates in order to be successful. The engineer is basically a sandbox game within a first-person shooter, and there's a lot of potential for exciting moments there. So don't 
spend your entire NG career sitting in a corner waiting for the enemy to come to you. Bring your buildings to them. Bring the buildings to your team. Play aggressive, but play it smart. And most importantly, play TF2 in VR because you can literally look behind your own back for spies while you're upgrading your sentry in front of you. It's the most overpowered strategy in the game, okay?